I'd like to call the uh, Common Council of the City of Amory on April 7th, 2021 to order. And let's start out with the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call. Uh, here. Here. Dan Here. Here. Lennon. Here. Leonard. Here. Elkin. Here. Anybody here for public comment? I don't see anybody. I would like to make a couple myself. Um, as people know, things are changing and changing all the time. I stopped and saw the uh, on-site engineer this morning at eight o'clock. He told me that the sanitary was going in today and up to Maple Street, followed by the storm sewer later in the week. Uh, I went to WPCA and announced that, and I went back to the site, and here they're putting in storm sewer, and then they're going to put in sanitary. So I guess the idea was to try to get that uh, intersection open a little bit quicker than to get once they get the sanitary or the storm in. Is that correct? Something like that. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So it, as it says, it changes every day. They get here and. Uh, it is what it is. Um, I, 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 we're going to be removing the clock here coming up. Uh, we're working on a, with the going to start working with the restorer out of St. Paul to start out with to see what he has to say, and we and it's going to go back up. Uh, we can have it uh, sandblasted and painted for a very reasonable amount. The amount to um, uh, to restore the actual clock, clock mechanisms to last another 10, 20 years would be nice at this time. So if anybody's interested in helping out monetarily on this project, this is not in the city budget, uh, it would be greatly appreciated. Any other public com any comments from anybody else? Okay, consent agenda items, minutes. Move to approve the agenda items. Second it. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. We'll start out with ordinance uh, 052021, tax incremental district water charge, and 062021, tax. Incremental district sewer charges. And Dave, were you yes, going to speak to that? Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce uh, Drew Len, who is the construction engineer that's on site. Um, he'll be here for the summer or well, pretty much most of it, I guess. Um, and then Eric Barclay is the engineer on the project as well. Um, I spoke from MSA, so I'd just like to introduce them. Um, the ordinances that you have before you are required by the DNR. Uh, as as uh, you recall, when we're doing this project, the Keller Avenue project, um, we are applying for safe drinking water fund and clean water fund through the uh, Department of Natural Resources. Uh, the repayment of that is going to be by the TIP district number six. So the debt service is going to be paid for by, by TIP number six. Um, so we need to have these ordinances in place so that um, the DNR requires that. Um, otherwise, we would have to have uh, look at increasing sewer charges and, and water charges. But because we're paying the debt service by TIP number six, um, we need to have these in place. These go for as long as the, uh, the kit is uh, open and we're looking at uh, probably a 10, 10 year amortization on this. So um, 
typically these loans, safe drinking water and clean water fund loans are 20 years. So we're shortening the time period because kid number six is going to be open that, you know, for 10 more years. So, so that's the reason for these ordinances. So that the kid number six can be the source of funds paying the debt. Any questions? I, I would entertain a motion approving the ordinances. Make a motion to approve ordinance 05-2021 tax increment incremental district water charges. I'm assuming we need to do them separately, Patty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll second it. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. I'll make a motion yeah, to <laughs> approve um, ordinance 06-2021 tax incremental district sewer charges. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion approved. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Reorganization of the Common Council and other governing bodies. Um, actually, I don't know where to start here. But uh, I have gone through, uh, should we start out with the, the committee as a whole? Is that where we we're going to start? Um, yeah, let's do that. Because that's, that's in the list of so the first order of business would be to elect, elect the president of the um, of the yeah. committee as a whole. Is but we have to make an we... appointment to council president for council president for next year. No, no, we're voting on it this time around because we're a committee as a whole. Well, that's just the committee as a whole. No. Okay. The committee as a whole determines it. So. I think the way it was set up was that you all vote on it. Yeah. And we can go through and yeah. That's how you want to do that. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a uh, anybody want to volunteer? Yeah, anybody? Anybody want to do it? <laughs> I guess. Okay. I I don't care. I I did one meeting that was <laughs> nobody lynched me. I you know <laughs> unless somebody else else says what he was interested yeah, in. Yeah, they want to do it. Right. Uh, want to it wouldn't make any difference to me. So. Yeah, I was with no disrespect to Rick. I would like to make would like to nominate Chad Leonard for the position, um, and and there's a reason behind it is that there's a reason behind it. <laughs> <laughs> Rick and I will do it. He paid you up. Rick, Rick, and I, Rick and I will do it all the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, I know he paid you. That's all right. We're okay. <laughs> I'll salary, second the motion. So. <laughs> okay, we have a motion made and seconded to elect Chad as president of the uh, committee as a whole. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. So, uh, as far as uh, we move forward here, I have a uh, 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 one vacancy on the library board and two vacancies on the board of appeals. I have interviewed. We have uh, for the library board. We have uh, uh, suggestions, um, and I also interviewed a couple other people. And I'm waiting to hear back. So we're going to leave that vacant for the time being. And on the board of appeals, anybody out there would would like to um, be on the board of appeals, please. Uh, you can go to our website at uh, under the government tab, boards and commissions, uh, open spots on in 
our government. So please uh, feel free to fill that out. Uh, so uh, I don't have the final list. Do we have to? Do you want to? You don't have to read what they're looking for. Would that help? Um, yeah. mm -hmm. The next on the list we have it looks like two terms that are going to expire in the planning commission. No, I I filled them all. Okay, so you want to let me know who they are? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, I guess we can just, as long as those are all filled, we can just move forward, right? Except for the one vacancy and two vacancies, or do we have to vote on? I understand from the ordinance we have to, yeah. to vote on. Okay. So you need yeah. to let a hold on these. Yeah. Yeah. So planning commission first. Okay. Let me go back. <clears throat> Paul Isaacson, Mayor, Mike Krushak, Chairperson, Julie Ryman Schneider, Stan Froden, Paul Schaefer, Linda Millerman, Dane Lyon. And the first term expiration is Mike Krusek, he's the chairperson. Yes, and he has a, a agreed to accept. Moving forward, and so is Julie. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so those are going to be Yep. Yeah. Do we have to vote on them individually? Yes, let's vote on each one individually. Motion to approve Mike Krusek. To the planning commission. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Any motion for Julie? Mm -hmm. Second. Any further discussion? Okay. 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 Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Plan commission is done. Yes, All right. Now let's go to uh, board of review. Hey, board of review. Um, uh, one in one alderman from each district uh, to be on the board of review along with the mayor and the, and the city administrator, clerk, treasurer. And that would be uh, Chad Leonard from Wards 1 and 2 and Julie Ryman Center from Wards 3, 4, and 5. And they both have agreed to uh, we serve on that Board of Review. So do we have a motion to approve Chad? So moved. Okay. Right. Any further discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. And the motion for to renew okay. Julie. Okay. Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Okay. We have already touched on library board. So. Pardon? We already touched on the library board. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's uh, three positions. Open there's three positions. Uh, Jennifer Tymon has agreed to uh, serve, and uh, Sarah Flanham is going to fulfill her term uh, on the council uh, for, for now. And Wendy Dietrich has going to be resigning here the 1st of May. So. That is the open position that we'll be considering at a later time. So we need um, a motion for Jennifer Timon. I'll make a motion. Second. Any further discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. And for Sarah Plano. Sarah is only going to go through your term as. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I think that makes the most sense. Oh, mm -hmm. for one year. Mm -hmm. I make a motion to appoint Sarah Flanagan. Second. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Downtown facade, that's. that's... They do their own thing. Okay. There's no something there. Okay, Board of Appeals. Those are where we have two vacancies and 
The other three are have 20. Oh, uh, Ed Flanham is the uh, term is due this year, so uh, he has agreed to renew his term. So we have to approve Ed Flanham. Motion to approve Ed. I'll second. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? All right. All right. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Okay, we have two. We have one vacant uh, spot, and um, um, I'm sorry. Oh, so we had Ed Flanham for 2021, and then Kathy Williamson. Oh, Kathy Williamson. Yeah. I have not. I said two vacant, and that's she's vacant okay. as of right now. I called and uh, okay. have not con been in contact. Okay. Well, I don't know that could be eligible for much longer if she's moving out of the city. So. Right. Oh. So that's why I kind of said vacant. <clears throat> so we've got two vacant Sorry. spots. Okay. okay. Uh, okay, Airport Commission. We have one vacancy to be filled by Bill Offner and Roger M Waterman will would like to renew his term on the Airport Commission. Uh, and nobody here probably knows Bill Offner. Bill Offner's owned a hangar out there in the airport. Uh, and is a, a pilot, a mechanic, and a inspection authorization type person. He's managed airports before, so I thought he'd make a good, good person. Okay, so how do you spell Bill's last name? O F F N E R. Okay, and he's replacing Pete. He's vacant. Oh shoot! Yeah, he's re he's doing he's the vacant one. Vacant. Okay. I I missed Pete there. Pete is uh would like to be on it for another term also. So right. okay. along with Roger and so I need, we need to approve Bill. And Roger. Peter and Roger. Yes. Okay. Make a motion to approve Bill Offner for the position. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Carries. Um. Peter. Make a motion, motion to approve Peter. I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And Roger Waterman. Motion no. approved. I'll second. Okay. Motion has been approved and seconded. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I have a question about Mark and Rich. They both say that their terms are up in 2020. So did they? Did we reapprove them last year and it's just not right in our document? Or? No, I, I went over it with Paul. Yep, mine is 2023 and 2023. Okay, yeah. the most recent document I had was from December. So that's, yeah. that was the one that I was looking at. Um, yeah, it could be in one drive and it, it has their um, 2023 for Rich. Okay. Where uh, is it in the one drive? Um, I'm, yeah, I'm also pulling it out. Under, or whatever that is. Um, um, and it's good in there. Okay. Um, as long as it's updated, I'm good. Yeah, I think I've got it under council or committees or okay. the folder just for that. Okay, okay uh, to the committee. Um, our the new community club um, uh, representative is Tom Hartman, who's the president, and Dave Forrest and Julie. Ryman Schneider, Ooh, I forgot that one, Julie. Okay. That's that one for uh, the reappoint uh, uh, to the tourism committee. Okay, sure. Okay, and Dave Forrest said he'd be fine with that. So, uh, motion to approve Tom Hartman. Is there anything else? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Day Forest. Motion to approve Day Forest. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Julie, Brandon Center. Motion to approve Julie. I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Let's move on to Amory 
So is Patty uh, just a, uh, Patty's not on the committee, she's just listed there? Yeah, I was supposed to ask. And I was going to ask for the ABC. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Who is that? Paul Schaefer. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we need to approve him. I approve Paul Schaefer to the tourism committee. Is that the planning commission? Uh, tourism. 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 Tourism.
<laughs> That's the worst. <laughs> okay, Baird Capital General Obligation Bond presentation. And is that Justin again? Or who's? Yeah, he said 530. Okay. Yeah. Well, should we move on to um, the change order for, and we'll come back to change order for Maple Street portion of the Keller Avenue project. Is that Eric? Okay. <clears throat> Thanks for letting us rip up your main street. <laughs> uh, we know that it's an inconvenience. And so, um, yeah, thanks for your cooperation in it this far. Um, as things happen with construction, things come up. And when we were doing kind of a final review of our plans and walk through, we noticed that something wasn't quite right in the, in the intersection of Maple Street. We decided to go back out, look at the storm sewer out there and found out that the storm sewer was only eight inch pipe going up Maple Street. And so draining that whole intersection of Keller Avenue at Maple uh, required about a 12 to 15 inch pipe. It required 12 inches in some places, 15 as it got downstream. So tying a 15 inch pipe into an eight inch pipe can create some problems and can potentially cause flooding and larger rain events. Um, and so the, way, the best way that we could figure out to fix it was to go down Maple Street a little bit more with the storm sewer. And that's the change order that you're seeing in front of you is that we updated the contract drawings. Where is that? Um, sorry, do you have that? In Page 14. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, great. 421. Yeah. So, 421. Uh, community of the whole. Where's the, there's community of the whole. Oh, so it's in the packet. Ain't there either, is it? I went by it. Yep. So, so that is essentially what the, the change order is okay. for is some extra storm sewer work, some extra paving uh, to go up Maple Street a little farther with the storm sewer. As professionals, we just didn't really feel good about tying into an eight inch storm sewer because eight inch storm sewer is not standard anywhere anymore. Uh, 12 inches is about a minimum. And so by doing this, you get a little extra storm sewer up Maple Street and that should ensure that Keller Avenue storm sewer functions correctly in the future. The, the expected increase with the order is 39,355. That is correct. Yep. And I think was there a cost estimate attached to that change order? Should look something. Yep. Yes. That's yeah. the next following page. So that's the itemized list of what we're expecting to take place at the bid prices that you have for those items. So uh, the bulk of the price does come in the storm sewer item, uh, as well as the, the extra paving to cover that once that street is ripped up. We decided not to do the curb and gutter down through there to save some money because it really didn't need to be done. Um, but the asphalt will have to come up so that they can get the new pipes in. Mm -hmm. So if you go up Ma East Maple Street, you're going? Be headed east on Maple Street. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. It'll go to that alley that's there. Um, just um, yeah, that next nice alley up. We see on item number okay. 60, it says storm manhole yeah. 96 inches. Is that the manhole with the sleeve going down? Yeah. Because it's a $13,000 piece of Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so, it's, so why is it so expensive, I guess, is why? So oh, that is, I mean, that was their bid price for for a 96 inch manhole that got submitted on the other. There's a couple of those down at Memorial where that big culvert comes in. Mm -hmm. And so just with the way that the storm sewer is situated in that area of Maple Street, this would be a manhole that's kind of near the alley. Mm -hmm. There's pipes coming in from all directions. And if you yeah. get a circle and you've got pipes coming in this way and this way and this way, you need a big enough circle to get those pipes in without having them hit before they get to inside the manhole. Um, so that that is their bid price that was submitted, and so uh, that's the cost for ninety six so the manhole. The whole concrete. This is the concrete structure around. that the pipes come into, and so at the surface, yeah, you just see a twenty seven inch piece of metal, mm -hmm. but down below that, it's going to be an eight foot hole that's okay. there.
Mm -hmm. Motion to approve the okay. change order number one. Second. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. After the change order gets approved. Okay. Aye. 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 All right. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. All right. There we go. Since we've got a couple uh, minutes left on our time, we did have some other stuff that kind of came up late this week. Um, and I'm going to have Drew talk about that a little bit. Um, I do have pictures for you here to pass out as well. So, Drew, if you want to start off passing pictures on. I got one for everybody. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, so good afternoon. Slab like Kay said, my name is Drew, um, and I'm uh, going to be your construction inspector for my remainder of Teller Avenue reconstruction project. I just want to introduce myself, and if there's ever any questions, please feel free to just contact me or just come up to me. I should be standing out there. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, as we are starting the job, uh, starting down there on the northern northern end of the project on Berman intersection. And uh, some of the pictures you are seeing is uh, um, of the street, Teller Avenue, just south of the uh, Berman Avenue intersection. And uh, some of the stuff that we are digging up is uh, some unforeseen, unsuitable backfill. Um, some of the things that we're coming across are uh, pretty fascinating to me, but uh, um, yeah, not suitable to have a road be built on it. Um, there's this uh, picture over here at the sort of a schematic and um, you can see that there is some um, trees that were laid underneath the um, lowlands when the highway was relocated so um yeah not ideal for our, our new road but as we we're laying pipe in the ground um we're digging up that uh wood the wood timbers or sawdust or in some areas of the trench there's actually just a whole one foot layer of uh, wood or organic material so um, to be respectful of the contractor and also to have a good street, we can't expect them to backfill with uh, organic material. So um, that's one of the unforeseen things that we started out with. Um, we estimated that there was going to be some uh, granular backfill that were, was needed to be imported on site. And uh, that item that I'm referencing, granular backfill, um, the cost associated with that item is, is to haul out unsuitable backfill and also to haul in a new fill. So I'm just, just uh, giving some background information, but uh, um, we estimated that there was going to be 350 uh, cubic yards of that fill, and uh, already in that intersection, we're up to around approximately 1,000 cubic yards of um, fill. So there's going to be an increase in uh, construction costs there, and hopefully by the next meeting, we can give you a, a cost estimate on, on what that cost is going to be associated with there. Um, Eric and I were looking through the uh, quantities, looking through the bid tab. And we were seeing that uh, we got a pretty uh, good price for a granular backfill, reasonable, and it was the most inexpensive price out of the bid that was uh, that was uh, submitted to us. So um, it's unforeseen and something that uh, is going to need to be replaced. Another item I wanted to talk about is the street lights that are on Teller Avenue. So um, the plan for the street lights was to try to salvage um, the street lights. Um, the public works department thought that the conduit and the wires were suitable to be salvaged. Um, so we're going to attempt to do that. But through the walkthrough, some of my due diligence is just to just see any problem that could occur further down the road. And some of the problems I was finding is that there were utilities underneath some of the light poles, like a let's say maybe a sanitary lateral or maybe a water service. And uh, it's too close to said light pole to have the contractor excavate a trench through there. So um, there was an increase in some quantities for uh, those light poles, I'll call those uh, utility conflicts. Um, there's also some uh, conflicts with regards to just having the sidewalk be ADA compliant. So in order to have the sidewalk ADA compliant, there needs to be a minimum of four uh, foot wide paths for, you know, maybe said wheelchair, or said uh, handicapped person or I don't know if handicap is the appropriate term anymore, but said person to make a pass through uh, the sidewalk. And as I'm walking through the project, I see that there's some areas where it's um, already not ADA accessible. So uh, it's going to be an increase of quantity there. And uh, maybe when we give you a 
estimate of uh, the increased construction costs on that granular backfill item will make sure we have that uh, um, number or quantity of light poles submitted to y'all too. So um, the main reason why I wanted just to discuss some of these things is as it, you know, increase in overall construction costs and uh, I want to be able to be aware of it. So yeah, thank you. You know, you talk down these timbers, but they've been down there for a hundred years and they're still, <laughs> <laughs> you can still recognize them as timber right, for me. Right. Right. Oh, you're right. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> but I bet as soon as, you, as soon as they saw air, it's just kind of. Yeah. Yeah, most I'm of awesome. them should have been down there, what, in the 50, early 50s when they changed 46? I think they, so. Honestly, they might have been before that. I would, uh, I would say before that, that because uh, it's okay. uh, this side of the Berman intersection. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. We had a project in uh, Eagle River once where the water main was hollowed out wood. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, Of the, the lighting is that the contractor, as they've been taking down light poles, um, they've noticed that the bases are really corroded. And to be honest, they're saying that it's a liability for them to restand them. And so we're working with Jeff to kind of look at those and assess what ones can be put up and what ones absolutely can't. Um, and so as such, there may need to be right now, they're estimating there needs to be eight new light poles from the ones because we're removing seven completely that are being salvaged off the job and then restanding the rest um, down. They estimate that there's 15 that are not able to be re put up. So if they, seven of them can go away, be part of that quantity, the other eight new. And so we're, we're coordinating with Jeff on that um, to try and figure out the best way forward on that. But wanted to let you know that the, the lighting contractor is saying it's a liability and he's sure. probably right. <laughs> All grand a piece, right? What was the uh, so let's say Jeff just uh, bought them directly from said supplier. I believe he estimated something of just under two thousand dollars for the small light poles. Um, which is, is what they're saying. The the big 30 foot ones, they're saying all of those can go back up. Oh. Those are in much better condition. Okay. Good, yeah. um, Good. But it's the it's the smaller ones that are the problems right now. So if and we, we kind of talked about it last week at our on site meeting that Jeff proposed that the city buy them and B and B still puts them up as part of the contract because then there wouldn't be any sort of uh, overhead associated with B and B ordering them and markup or anything like that. Um, they wouldn't change their contract at all. They'd just be putting up a new light pole instead of a salvage light pole. So um, I do think that's going to be the best way forward. And once we can figure that out, we'll have we'll work with Jeff to get a price and that sort of thing to get to you. But wanted to make you aware that that that's been something that has mm -hmm. arisen since construction started as well. Yeah, they so, said that they got a five gallon pail of corrosion out of one of them. Oh yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, that is a lot. <laughs> so they're pretty thin now. I'm, I'm sorry if we replace one, we'll replace them all, and they're all new. They're all of the same era. You know, so you, you're going to have some that are going to be tipping over in a couple of years. And some yeah. So good. yeah, there's that. There's that. I mean, uh, part of MSA's planning, uh, we were we were proposing to replace the uh, uh, lighting system for all, all of Keller Avenue. And then through future discussion with the public works um, director at the time, I was determined to try to salvage the lighting system. So kind of where we stand now is in that salvaging area where we're going to put new bases um, where it's feasible, and the uh, you know city could uh, remove and replace light poles as needed. So something like that. Is that something we should put on the agenda for community as well? Good. Yeah. Well, and I'm just thinking, you know, the term or however old those are, efficiency probably has changed and it might be in the best interest of the city as a whole to perhaps even replace them. I agree with them. So I think that's something that we need to look at. I'm sure they're not LEDs. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I think they, they changed be. them. I think, oh, really? I think, oh, we, I think we upgraded so. them a few years ago. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Okay. So there might be some salvage value in the lighting. <laughs> 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 
yeah, I, I guess that that is part of it. Is we're looking for guidance on that. I mean, if the city does want to just kind of move forward with all new small light poles, uh, we can do that. I, I would say what they're saying is the 30 footers can go back up. And so, um, if you're happy with those and like those, I would say that's a that's the cost saving to you. But if, if you're in that position of let's get all new ones, then we do need to get on that. Yeah, <laughs> let the electorate know. And let's let's put that on the committee of the board and, and sure. discuss it. What was that committee meeting? Yeah. 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 yeah, and there's a lead yeah. time too on that. So the one the one thing yeah. about about salvaging well, I'm that I would tomorrow morning that kind of discourage is that great. the labor rates nowadays and B and B is not any different than any of the other bigger electricians guys. By the time you tire to take those apart. Yeah. And frog around putting them back in something that may or may not fit exactly the way you're better off to just toss them and get them they come with the parts that fit there might be pre some uh assembled you know so it's just putting the thing on i i don't my experience with that stuff is if you gotta pay somebody to take it apart they throw it away and it just costs more than it's worth okay yeah. Would you be okay with me sharing with the contractor at a meeting tomorrow morning that the city is going to uh, look at the issue of lighting and potentially replace all the small poles? Is that okay to share? Not that there's been any decision, but no. Okay. All right. Is there any other questions about the project for us? When is the when is the the expected date of having the Berman Avenue uh, exit? open there for uh, local traffic there yeah okay. yeah yeah i'd say in the upcoming two weeks here there could be some kind of temporary gravel or some kind of graded sub base for local traffic only yeah. is a liability for the contractor to open up their traffic control for local traffic but I'm sure there could be a compromise that's the only complaint that i that i hear at all yeah. i mean people are generally speaking pleased with how rapid it's going and uh, you know that's i've heard um, um you know what my water doesn't work you know you hear a little bit of that but it comes back on pretty fast but <laughs> that, that snake trail that we call riverside avenue or riverview avenue there's uh it's getting to be old right away quick so, well i live on it <laughs> getting old you too right <laughs> really old <laughs> yeah no we also need to think about just the safety of people coming through town right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. perfect yeah. Thank, thank you yeah, yeah. thank you yep. thank you mm -hmm. okay so are we ready yep. for Baird capital i i'm Wait. here Hey. Good evening, everyone. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so I believe Patty sent you a presentation packet that I'd like to go through tonight with you. Uh, this is really a follow up to the committee of the whole meeting we had uh, back in March. So the presentation that I'll go through with you, uh, if you look at page one of that presentation, one of the first funding options that we were looking at was uh, going to uh, the local bank and doing a 10-year financing. So on page one, when you're looking at that, there's, there's a bunch of numbers on, on the page. And the way to read this is on the left side, that's the existing debt service, the levy supported debt service for the city on an annual basis. So in 2021, the debt service levy was 250,405 and you can see what it is thereafter. In the middle of the page, that's what the, the potential uh, funding for the city center project uh, may cost. You know, it may be up to 4,250,000, 4, hopefully it comes in less, but that's kind of the number that uh, the committee of the whole requested that we use because we were using, I believe, 4 million in, in the prior run. So looking at a $4,250,000 10-year financing at a 2.07% interest rate, you can see what on the right side, the combined debt service, what the debt service may look like after the financing. So it, it goes from $250,405 to potentially $621,744 and kind of stays in that range over the next several years. 
you know, we're saving a lot of interest cost by doing a 10 year financing. But when you think about what the effect of the, the tax impact is going to be on this, this particular project, you know, it's, it's going to be potentially about a $2.21 uh, impact to your taxpayers. And when, what does that mean? You know, we'll discuss this on the following pages, but say for a, say for a $200,000 home, that's about $442 of additional cost for, for this project. So it's, you know, it's a pretty big jump to the, the, the debt service mill rate uh, year over year. When you look at page two of the presentation, this is kind of the, the plan that I've been working on with Patty um, over the last several months looking at how, how to finance this project and kind of minimize that tax impact. And at the same time, get the city the lowest overall interest uh, cost savings possible. And, and this is really gonna be going through the, the public offering bonding process. The city did this back in 2016, where I helped you refinance pretty much uh, the majority of the city's outstanding debt. And, and, and at the time we went for a bond credit rating which the city received an A plus by Standard and Poor's. And actually what, what's interesting is uh, Patty and I actually got an email from uh, Standard and Poor's today. Uh, they affirmed the city's A plus bond credit rating, which is, which is great news um, because you know, going into this large project, the, the good bond rating is gonna lead to the low interest uh, rate that we hope that the city receives. So in here, you can see that the, the same kind of concept, left side of the page, that's the existing debt service. Then we're gonna be doing a, kind of like an interim financing, getting the city the $4,250,000 in funding by bidding that out and so forth. And then over the next several months from pretty much June all the way through August, September is when the city is gonna be finalizing those project costs and making sure that uh, essentially you don't borrow more than you actually need to on a long-term basis. So if the project comes in at $4 million, you know, you only will refinance into long-term financing for that $4 million. But that's stuff that won't be known until, you know, over the next several months. If you look at the, the, the long-term financing there for the $4,250,000, what we're doing there is we're structuring the debt to, to keep that mill rate basically uh, on a consistent basis. So the combined mill rate on the right side of the page, $1.49, it goes to pretty much a max of $2.13, a much uh, more uh, easy impact to, to absorb versus the, the 10 year financing. Again, this is, this is gonna have more interest cost, but the tax impact um, is gonna be much lower and allow you to basically borrow for future projects, investments, and so forth, if you need to later down the line and, and keep that impact, uh, again, uh, pretty, pretty minimal. So that's the, the real structure and strategy that, you know, Patty and I have been really working on over the last couple of months. And uh, we feel like we're in a pretty good spot. And as you can see, the interest rate on this one that we're projecting by going through the, the bonding process is about a 2.14%. Now, interest rates go up, they go down, but hopefully... Uh, this gives a pretty good idea on what things may look like. So going to page three of the presentation, this is really just a, uh, to kind of show you the side-by-side -side between the two different options, uh, one being the 10-year financing, the other one being the 20-year financing. Um, you can see what the, the debt service cost differences between the two options, and you can see what the impacts, the max uh, mill rate impacts over 2021 may potentially be. You know, two dollars and twenty-one cents for the ten-year impact for the ten-year financing, sixty-four cents for the uh, twenty-year financing. And again, from a property tax perspective, what does that really mean? You know, when you think about that two hundred thousand dollar property uh, in the city, it would potentially have a four hundred forty-two dollar impact on the ten-year financing and a hundred twenty-eight dollar impact on the twenty-year financing. So, uh, pretty significant differences there. But again, uh, you know there are pros and cons to, to, each, to each option. So going to page four of, of the presentation and, and you know, looking at uh, the recommendation by Patty and so forth, uh, going with the public uh, offering process, the 20 year financing, uh, here's the timeline of the different uh, steps that need to take place in order to 
uh, get this complete. Uh, so the first thing is, you know, we I, I spoke to the committee of the whole on March 16th. Uh, tonight, the the city council would, uh, you know, approve kind of the, or consider the plan that I'm laying out here tonight, uh, and kind of give us the approval to move forward with the, with the process. Uh, on uh, basically May 5th is going to be a busy day for council because on that particular day you're going to be approving the notes, the short term financing interest rate, and at that same meeting, approving the parameters resolution, uh, authorizing uh, Patty to sign off on the bond sale whenever we're ready, whenever you know the final costs are, are determined and so forth, and basically allowing uh, you know that we don't exceed a certain interest rate and so forth. Um, that's all going to be in the resolutions that are going to be in front of you on May 5th. Um, on June 1st, that's when you'll receive the money for the short-term financing. So on that particular day, you can start paying the invoices and you know getting the project going. So that, that'll be an exciting day. And then at the same time, we're gonna be going through the, uh, the issuance, the process to get the issuance for the bonding uh, ready to go. So that'll be putting together the offering document, uh, you know, going out for the bond credit rating with standard and poor's and, and uh, hopefully again achieving that A plus rating, and then the marketing for for the bonds over a couple week period of time. Then anticipated in August of 2021 is when the uh, when Patty City Administrator would potentially approve the parameters resolution, assuming we hit the parameters laid out in the resolution. I, you know, assuming timing is right, interest rates are are favorable, etc., and then ultimately closing on the long-term financing uh, in September of 2021. So by August of 2021, hopefully we are locked in with long-term rates and, and, and that's all squared away. So yeah, a lot of steps in the process, but we, we got a really good plan here. And uh, if there's any questions for me, be glad to answer them. Yeah, I got a couple questions for you. Um, going back to page two, I noticed that um, the first seven years, there's very little principal payment uh, to keep up the, to, to make the existing debt, debt service go away. And I just lost my there, page two. Uh, so after seven years, um, we still owe the ba approximately $4 million. Um, if we go to page three, or no, page one, let's go to page one. Um, over a 10 year period, I know that the cost is higher and, uh, but after seven years, I would say over 50% is paid off. So this is a, one of the decisions we have to make. Um, most of it paid off in seven years. And, and so we have uh, more, uh, uh, borrowing power. And the other thing is the difference, uh, a, you know, there's the difference between a 10 year loan and a 20 year bond there is uh, 751,000 uh, more in interest. So there's, we have to weigh, you know, the cost to the taxpayers over a 20 year period versus the cost over a 10 year period and where we will be sitting in seven years. So I think the seven year number is very important that uh, we look at for how much debt we will have at that point. So that was my, do you have any comment there? Well, I, one other thing that I think we have to also consider is that a uh, reevaluation of property values is happening in 2022, right? Uh, Correct. So, you know, if we're, if we're talking about on a $200,000 house at $442 additional uh, tax per year, there's going to be probably a lot of houses that are moving from that 150 to 200,000, right? So it's going to be compounded by that fact that the values of the properties are going up too. So when, because people generally look at their tax bill and they say, my gosh, my taxes went from 1,800 to 3,000 this year. And it's all because of that stupid city center. <laughs> well, no, it's a, there's a lot of other aspects that go into that. So I think it's just whatever we do, we have to educate and make sure that we're educating the uh, the city and what impacts these decisions are having. Yeah, and, and I would add that, you know, when you think about 
how, how to typically borrow for different capital type projects. You know, when you think of equipment type projects, you, you definitely want to borrow for only a few years or, or whatever that useful life of that project may be. Uh, same thing with roads. You know, typically you want to keep that to be, you know, 10 years or less if that's the useful life of the project or, or 15 years. Uh, this, this particular project has a useful life that, uh, you know, you tell me, but I, I would anticipate uh, having a useful life well beyond 20 years. And so you kind of want to try to always match up the useful life to the borrowing term, uh, because ultimately, you know, it's going to be out there for the, the taxpayer's benefits and, and, you know, the village or the city's benefits um, for a long period of time. Can we pay off this, uh, these bonds quicker? You, Faster? Yes, you absolutely can. So, so bonds typically have a, you know, seven, eight year call feature in them. So meaning that in seven or eight years, if your cash flush have, you know, all this money, you've exceeded your, um, your fund balance policy and, and et cetera, uh, you absolutely can uh, start paying down the debt um, after say seven or eight years. So, um, you know, that, that, that'd be great if you are in possession, position to do that. Um, at the same time, in seven, eight years, you, you have the ability to uh, refinance um, if interest rates are lower, uh, you know, if, if we're in a really low interest rate environment again at that particular time. Uh, so it gives you it gives you a lot of flexibility. Is is that seven year period is that structural to the to the the way bonds are paid off? Is that built in so that you don't pay it off? You just pay interest. You you just basically have the ability after say seven years, whenever after seven years to to pay it off. So there's no you know on a certain interest payment date or anything. It's it's with a thirty day call notice after that seven years. You can pay off whatever you want. So after seven years, we've paid down very little principal. And if we did want to refinance, we'd be refinancing pretty close to the same amount. And, and uh, hopefully, hopefully you have money at that particular time to, again, reduce the, the refinancing if you did refinance. And uh, I, I guess what I'm getting at, I was kind of looking at a long-term uh, uh, projects coming on like a new sewer plant or sewer plant upgrade. Um, uh, we're we're going to have to start planning for that pretty soon. So that's, I guess that answers all my questions. So there's a lot of things we got to think about. What, what uh, the uh, existing debt services, that's bond related also, correctly? What's the uh, interest rate on our existing debt service? Uh, we have evaluated to see if there's any opportunities. Now, again, in 2016, uh, we refinanced a, a number of outstanding bond right. bank loans and so forth. And so at this particular time, it doesn't make economic sense to, to refinance anything at this particular time. No, I was just questioning whether with the, uh, with the interest rate in 2016 was probably fairly low, but it still might be what four percent, three and a half percent. Wouldn't it make more sense to pay that that existing debt off more rapidly? Yeah, that, that's a great point. Um, I'm just pulling it up right now because you know that that's the other thing is you do have this outstanding debt that's out there. Um, that you absolutely could pay down that debt service if you had money to do so. What well, seemed to me to be a better choice to, if we end up raising the levy rate, as long as, I mean, money at uh, 2.1, 2.07 is practically free money, not quite, but it's mm -hmm. close. Um, and that we'd be better off if we raised the mill rate one half of what the of what the uh, twenty year rate is, which would give some room. Mill rates are funny; once they go up, it's terrible getting them back down. 
Um, but if we did have extra money on the mill rate like that, we'd be better off paying off the highest, the higher interest uh, bonds yeah. first. Not, you know, I guess I'd rather personally, I think going for 20 years on this, uh, on the building makes more sense. And if we can pay down the, the our existing faster. Yeah, that's a good point. I just pulled it up and, and the city has some outstanding debt that can be callable whenever at say 2.69% or 3.4%. It's not a ton, but it's, you know, it's $150,000 that could be. Uh, sure. Yeah, when you look at a million six, it, it adds up pretty fastly, pretty rapidly. And I agree with you wholeheartedly. I think the building is, you know, uh, will be paid for quite a while before it's uh, reached its useful life. E even from a standpoint of remodeling, I, you know, I would think you get 20 years out of because we have designed and worked and you know, uh, the, this building has been has been well vetted before we started. Do anything to it. So well, I, keep in mind that two point or a four point two five million number has a lot of buffer built into it too. The yeah. Project, oh, sure. The projected yeah. cost of the project is three point five. Right. You know, we're anticipating some overages like every project has, um, but we just we we throw that number to ensure that there's enough room to grow into it if if needed. Yeah. It's it's a number, not a goal. <laughs> Well, I just think um, the economic impact to the to the residents is going to be in the long run. It's going to be less expensive to them to to do the ten year bond than it is to do a ten year note. Um, significantly different, and I think that you know ultimately our goal is to have the least impact to our residents, regardless of the term. That's, that's my opinion. So what are you saying, Sarah, to go with 10 years? No, 20 years. 20, yeah. Yeah, I, it makes sense to me to do it that way. If you ask anybody, if you want your taxes to go up by this much or this much, I know what the answer is. <laughs> yeah. Well, if every taxpayer was going to be here in 10 years, they would say, okay, let's probably, let's pay it off faster. But a lot of them are saying, I'm going to pay for this now and in 10 years, I'll probably be dead and gone, you know, or, or whatever. That, I might move out and, yep, I, and then I've, pay, I've paid for this building in 10 years and you're going to enjoy it off my, you know, for the next 30. So, but you know, <clears throat> it's so much for uh, 20 years and it's so much for 10 years. So yeah. you're paying a smaller amount for twice as long. So it, it, yeah. it's not as much, but it's, it's nobody, anybody going to be here in 20 years to I pay the full amount. So um, hopefully a lot of you guys are. <laughs> Good. We we keep paying, keep paying, paying my social security, right? <laughs> Work harder, you guys. But I, I, I also think if we do a 10-year note, that's going to strap us down mm -hmm. for future projects. Yeah. You know, the sewer plant is probably going to be $20 million project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I get my coupons. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think we all appreciate yeah, that information the way you say it. It makes sense to me. When I was looking into the total debt service we were paying for the city center, basically, once we take the loan, we go back to 2019. How much we paid in debt in 2019. Mm -hmm. That's essentially what, what that is. So it's not like a huge hike compared to a couple, two or three years. Yeah, this, this does help us keep it at a level. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. yeah, I think most taxpayers would be happy as a clam if they, their rate stays relatively the same. Yeah. Well, and with that being said, I mean, I, I completely understand and appreciate your comments as well, Paul. And I think that if we can keep it at a lower level for a longer period of time, um, I think it's going to set us up for success going forward when we do have to deal yeah. with the sewer plant. Yeah. Be oh, right. I was just using that, oh, that no, as an example. Sure. No, I just I wanted to make sure that. everybody's clear on what the Understood. what the difference is. Well, we know we're going to have to buy a fire truck for you know not too long a time. So Lincoln can be the borrower, can't they? 
Um, yeah, I don't know why not, but but it, I mean, we'll still end up paying the same amount. Yeah. But. So what's the action we need to take right now? Is it to approve one of these two methods of financing so that Baird can do their work to get bids? Is that where we're at? <clears throat> yeah, basically along the timeline here. Um, now, if uh, I, I guess I got one more question here. You got a, a rate of 2.14%. Um, uh, public market, if, if, um, will that change, uh, if when you bid it out, do you have a fixed percentage for you? And, uh, if you get a lower percent than, uh, say, say the going rate's 199, uh, there, is, does, does that go down or how, how does that work? No, I mean, we don't, we don't have any, um, we're not the one buying it. We're, we're the one, you know, sell, selling it in the open market. So, um, you know, we don't dictate the interest rate. We just uh, essentially uh, get whatever the market interest rate would be um, out there at that particular time. Now, interest rates between now and August or, you know, that there's a lot of time between now and then a lot can happen in the economy and interest rates and so forth. But, um, you know, ultimately my job is, is and really to work for you and get you the lowest interest rate, however I can do that. Um, and, and that's, that's what we're trying to do. So the 2.114 is fixed from you though now? Is that? that that's or? kind of what we're seeing in the, if you were say in the bond market um, today, uh, that's, that's pretty close to what you may receive. Um, you know, because we're in the bond market every day. Um, you know, I was just on a uh, call right before here doing very similar to this for another community. So, you know, we're, we're in this, we're doing this nonstop. And, and so we kind of know what, where interest rates are on a daily basis. And this kind of was a, a guesstimate of where the city would potentially receive rates because ultimately municipalities, you know, when you sell bond issues, it's not a commodity because every municipality is a little bit different financially, um, you know, and has different bond credit ratings, except, et cetera. So uh, this is a, a, a best guess of where you could potentially receive interest rates. Now, you know, you may come in better, um, you may come in uh, a little bit higher, but it should be right around there. I, I guess what I was saying, your 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 percentage rate is fixed, so it's not so correct. The it's goes. fixed throughout the whole life of the the bond issue. That's correct. Okay, I mean, okay. Uh, all right. So I make a motion to approve the twenty year plan as stated by here. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Good. And that's what you needed. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, everyone. I look forward to seeing you on May 5th. All right. You know, I do have one question. Uh, on page two, I just saw that it, uh, this uh, says uh, assumes principal and interest to be refinanced with the bonds on 9-1-2021. Does that mean our existing debt's going into the new bond also? No, nope. That's just the this short-term kind of construction financing. Uh, this okay. means that the full 4250000 would be needed. Uh, but again, hopefully the project costs come in, you know, less than that. And at that particular time, we'll refinance whatever you need to. Okay. All right. Thanks. You betcha. Yep, thank, thank you, you. everyone. Bye. Bye. Okay, as we move on here, amendment to the contract for safe drinking water loan and clean water fund loan. Dave, it's you again. Okay. When we started this process, uh, we got a contract signed by the city um, for funding applications and administration that was signed on September 4th of 2019. 
And in there, we had book of work that would include the administration of the CBD. Uh, it would include the safe drinking water and clean water fund uh, applications, and also the clean water fund and safe drinking water administration. We had a couple of amendments already um, for the applications for those two programs, but we did not uh, have a an amendment for the uh, for the loan administration. So before you is an amendment to the contract that uh, would include the administration for both the uh, safe drinking water loan program and the clean water fund program. For 20,000. Yes. For 20,000, yes, that's correct. Amendment number three. These, these fees, uh, all of the fees except the CDBG administration are eligible to be paid for by the safe drinking water and the clean water fund loan. So they'll be wrapped up in those loans. Which again, I think the interest rate on those are going to be right around 1%. Even be better than better. <laughs> <laughs> If you can't get a city center done. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to make a motion to approve amendment number three to the contract or MSA. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion well, carried. Thank you. It looks like you're next again. Okay. Developers agreements, TIF financing, Dave Rasmussen. Yeah, we talked with Patty and with Mayor. We've uh, we've talked about some uh, possibilities for getting more housing into uh, Amory. Uh, what uh, what programs might be out there that's available for that? Um, we, we have through the closure of TIF number five, um, the city passed the resolution to uh, extend it for one more year to get the affordable housing extension. And affordable housing uh, from a TIF standpoint is, is not low income, it's not low to moderate income. It's defined as being, um, you know, housing that is less than 30% of a person's annual income so that can have a wide range of you know you can see the uh um you know it can be just about any type of housing you know that that's uh, considered affordable housing another definition that i i kind of like uh, as far as affordable housing is um uh, we're working with a developer down in the southern part of the state and their definition of affordable housing was where the workforce goes to sleep, basically. It's for, you know, uh, workforce, housing, that type of thing. So um, so I think we have about 150,000 in that. Um, the American Rescue Plan that uh, was signed um, as approximately 250, 280, 280 that uh, that the city will uh, will get. Um, one of the uses of that at this time um, is for water, sewer, and broadband uh, infrastructure. I know a lot of communities are looking at that as a possibility for addressing some housing in that. Um, in the village of Lux, we're we're going to apply our money to. Uh, we're hopefully going to get a grant this year to uh, do our uh, Park Avenue from Main Street up to school. Um, otherwise, that fund related uh, issues, and, and I think you've been kind of following that a little bit more. Um, so there's money available there. Um, TIF tax increment financing does have. Um, you know, 
you can set up a TIF district that has uh, new residential subdivisions in it. That might be a possibility. Whereas the, the you know, you put the infrastructure in, write down basically the cost of of new lots and so forth, and then use the tax increment off of the new houses that are built um, uh, to to pay for that infrastructure. Um, there is a lot of talk, I know, at the state. Um, the new stimulus program or the infrastructure program that uh, may be coming out uh, that they're talking about now is looking at, uh, you know, quite a few dollars for affordable housing. Because affordable housing is, and uh, housing development is, is a big issue for every community. You know, in this state and in a lot of areas. Um, so um, those are some options. Uh, again, with with the TIF district, you're limited, but they are looking at changing the TIF law to allow for more workforce housing, um, where you could have a higher percentage of your TIF district. Uh, right now, it's 35 percent can be residential development. Uh, new residential development, they're looking at maybe making that about 60%. So those are some of the are kind of in the uh, uh, in the works for addressing this affordable housing. Um, whenever you're looking at this, I think you're you're looking at a developer's agreement of some type, whether it's in a TIF district or or not. You know, if you want to have a housing developer. Uh, if you're fortunate enough to get a housing developer that's interested, you've got to have some type of agreement as to what you know the city's going to do and what the housing mm -hmm. uh, developer is going to do. I know when they, you know, Polk County initiated and included that uh, housing study for the county. And by the way, there is a webinar next week, mm -hmm. um, you know, that the county is having uh, on the on housing. Unfortunately, schedule is time that our, our Billy board meets six o'clock on the second Wednesday. <clears throat> but um, uh, you might get some insights there. And but came out of that housing study that was done is that you know housing developers there have to be that partnership between public and you know public and uh, private partnership in order for this to do, you know, make it happen, this housing development. You know, we're looking at a housing development in Lux. We've got the cost of the infrastructure. It's going to be about $100,000 per lot just for the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So there definitely has to be some type of, you know, partnership between the two uh, in order to get this stuff off the ground. Uh, we worked with quite a few housing developers, uh, you know, uh, utilizing TIF uh, mainly, um, you know, and uh, um, like I said, it's, it's, it's kind of an issue everywhere. Everybody's got that issue. There's just, and it's a, you know, it's a workforce, it's an economic development issue as well, you know, because there are a lot of businesses that would like to expand but they just don't you know they've got to draw from such a large area um you know in order to get workers there's you know not enough workers in the first place but you know the housing just isn't there um you know part of that study that was done shows that you know workers in the in the village of a lot are coming from Grantsburg, they're coming from webster uh so forth i mean that's a pretty Pretty wide area to to uh, get your workers from, but if you could have places in in your community for housing for that workforce housing, it uh, it really would make it a lot easier. And hopefully, you know they'd be able to uh, you know sustain their work, workforce, the businesses there. So, uh, so that's just a couple of things, um, you know. Uh, if, if if you do developers that are interested, you know, we could we could certainly, you know, start looking at, you know, how are we gonna, 
you know, make this go through? Um, how are we going to be able to, you know, bring it from a concept to implementation and so forth? And we'd be happy to work with you on that. So, um, any questions you folks might have? I'm curious. You said lot uh, TIF costs for a per lot were a hundred thousand. Is that that must include street, sidewalk, curb street, gutter, sidewalk, water and sewer, ele no ele electricity and um, gas costs are on top of that. Even that. And that was that. We that's just a piece of undeveloped land, right? Right. That is currently is a piece of undeveloped land. Yeah, undeveloped land that. Um, uh, uh, is actually owned by the school, and we were looking at you know developing that, but the infrastructure cost was two million bucks. Um, I mentioned the American Rescue Plan. Um, you know, you're getting two hundred and eighty thousand. Um, you know, one thing I, you know, you know, the county is going to be getting some of that funds, those funds as well. Um, so maybe that might be an avenue to, to approach the county. Uh, and basically, it's based on $100 per capita. So I think the county is getting probably about $4.2 million on what the population is. Mm -hmm. They may have plans for that, but you know, I, you know, I think that might be something, especially after they done the housing study and that we know the need to to you know for these public and private uh, partnerships we talked to uh, a developer I, I talked to a developer last week um, uh, Paul Schaefer from AEDC and I um, uh, from Balsam Lake area that uh, she has been developing in Wisconsin most of her life and she moved back to Boston Mike and she wants to invest in local communities and stuff. And she, and she mentioned something about 55 plus housing. Do, do you know what programs are available in that? She said that, that that's an, that's another avenue, mm -hmm. 55 plus housing. Yeah. Most of your programs that um, address housing, are going to be income related as well. Okay. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I don't know about the. I didn't ask about income, so yeah. I yeah. thought that um, most of the federal pro federal programs and state programs that you have are going to be, you know, income based. Um, you know, there's low income tax credits available through. Uh, the Wisconsin Housing and Economic Development Authority. But again, a certain percentage of those have to be for low to moderate income uh, persons in that. So, um, yeah, you know, we can look at some other programs out there, but again, most of those are going to be income based and, and not market, market okay. rates. So, uh, the um the 280,000 could be used for water and sewer? Water and sewer, yeah. Okay. There's not a lot of rules out there yet on this. Um, we're still trying to get uh, some guidance on that. Uh, the league has, a, I think it's weekly. Yeah, they had one today. I, I wasn't yeah. part of it, but they had Tammy Baldwin on the, um, as part of the league uh, webinar today. and. Uh, um, she said the Treasury Department is, is trying to put together some some guidance um, on how this money is, can be used. Probably about uh, in May after May first is probably when you get your first check. Right. And then the following spring, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I and then the money has to be used by by uh, uh, end of 2024. Mm -hmm. Um, some communities are using it, you know, like, um, you know, part of that, uh, one of the eligible activities is, is the loss of revenue. If you experience the loss of revenue due to COVID, um, you can use that money. And, and uh, there's a lot of communities that, uh, 
you know, <coughs> you know, the Wisconsin Dells area, you know, they, they were hit really hard with COVID when everything had to shut down because they had the premier tax credits uh, or tax, uh, resort tax uh, that they, they use as part of their income for their, you know, running their city. But, um, you know, smaller towns, you know, I don't, I don't know, you know, like in luck, we, we didn't experience any loss of revenue as a result of COVID. No, I, I don't think so. So it is, and this infrastructure, the water and sewer came in right at the last minute. Uh, the Senate has amended it to include that. So. And it includes broadband too? Broadband too, yes. Mm -hmm. One of the things that um, we're doing, whether we do segment one or segment one or two, is the new road into an industrial park, and that includes water and sewers. So we could maybe think about using part of that towards going towards that to reduce our debt that we incur on that. Um, for your share of the the cost of that, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, okay, I, I believe you could. Okay. Are there any restrictions on you know? Seems to me that one of the one of the issues, at least in our city, has always been the fact that people perceive that we don't have a lot of housing buildable area to develop. Mm -hmm. And I know, you know, periodically people go around and they say, well, there's 29 lots in the city of Amory to build on, but there's a reason most of those 29 aren't built on because they're either not in an area that somebody wants to build in, they're small or diagonal or whatever. Um, is there a restriction on the city uh, uh, forward thinking and buying uh, land that can be then uh, used for uh, to entice developers to start uh, areas? And we're, we we don't have much land right here because we got rivers and lakes and everything else like that. So um, even our industrial park is kind of guarded, you know, as far as the, the value of the the uh, property that we purchased. It, I mean, we're making it work, but it it did come with some issues. Um, so if there was an area, for instance, that was flat and level and nice and reasonably close. Uh, uh, well, that, that could be part of the development cost as well, you know, um, you know, you know, the land purchase is like the infrastructure, but, you know, so, you don't so we can buy, we could buy a piece of ground and then turn around and say, look, we have this and we have a plan. And if you're a developer, We'd like to work with you and and do do something. And I I just I, my heart goes out to the developers. You know uh, uh, I don't know about luck, but over the years Amory has kind of made it where the developer has to stand all the costs right up front. And we've tried to alleviate that. You know certainly in the last couple of years by deferring some of those payments and so on and so forth. But you're right. I think a hundred thousand a lot is probably fairly reasonable to, you know, compare it. And and now you're looking at a guy paying a hundred grand for a lot. Well, nobody wants to buy a house that's got a hundred thousand dollars worth of land under it. Right. Not unless it's on North Wind anyway. Right. right. Um, you know, so yeah. That's one of the big questions or problems we have is just doing that. Uh, we got a guy that owns thirteen acres within the city limits and uh uh, which is Gary Bauermeister, mm -hmm. and uh, we're to work on a program to get him started um, would would be nice, you know. Uh, figure out a way that it's a win-win-win for everybody. Right, right. That's what it boils down to, because it, again, you know, you used to require the developer to put everything in. Well, you know, it used to be that water and sewer and streets were a lot cheaper and homes were a lot cheaper and do everything now and you can't even build a home for two hundred thousand and put it on a hundred thousand dollar lot and that's without the land cost yet you know yeah. it's just there has to be that you know public and private partnership you know to to, to try to make that work and 
and you know tip is one way of doing it because you know you can you know get some of your investment back you know um as the developer builds but then you need that developer to build and uh, you know it, it's it's a very tough situation we we did several um several so back in 2006, 2007, there was there were several communities that had put in subdivisions, you know, and, and took the gamble, but then the recession hit, and you know, they're still not working out. Well, so, so it, 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 it's it's a risk, but you know, you try to minimize that risk through the the developers agreement, whether you're working with the tip district or just you know some type of uh, partnership with the private developer by the land does the extraterritorial zoning play into that not really no. i mean if you have if you have land that's uh, ag land that looks good for developing for instance um but if it's if it's zoned for ag can you use extraterritorial zoning to say something to the effect that if that changes, then a new zoning applies to it? You would, right now, uh, you can put development plans together with your neighboring town and kind of select areas that, you know, that you can see the city expanding or, you know, that might be developable. And those are cooperative, cooperative the boundary agreements. Um, you see that over by uh, quite a bit over in the east side of the state in the more populated areas, but you know, more and more you see, you know, smaller towns and that putting those cooperative this boundary agreements together so that you have kind of a plan for for you know expansion into you know little towns. have all the answers for you tonight. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> well thank I, you, Dave. If I did, I'd be a very, very rich man. Yeah. <laughs> well, you wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. <laughs> yeah. right. Well, thank you very much. That's been very helpful. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Well, just keep me posted, um, you know. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, if something comes up where we can start working with somebody that uh, wants to develop, I think, you know, we can work out something. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah, thanks, thank David. Yep. Thanks, David. Thank you. All right. Okay. As we move forward, ordinance zero four dash two zero two one. Ethics Board in 072021 Chapter Forty Seven Revision. So zero four dash. 2021 is what we already passed. Is that correct? No. no. Oh, okay. So we're looking at this. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's just numbered before the two we already passed. Okay. Um, so we're looking at setting up an ethics board, and then there's an ordinance amending the code of ordinances of the city of Amory creating chapter 47-8 of the Code of the Ordinance of the City of Amy. Any discussion? This is covered in committee, right? Um, we started the discussion. We started the discussion, and then what I did is I put together the ordinance, and I had the attorney look it over, and he gave me his approval with the changes. And then the 47 we have to change because that is our budget. Now, does this um, encompass all departments and all employees within the city of Amory? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> if anybody um, who's paid by the city of Amory, so that, okay. that could be you. 
to include that. Right. So okay. it could be anybody that's paid by the city. Okay. And I, I was just, and that's what I thought, but then it was specifically noted under 3A, um, as in place of the board of fire and of police and fire. And so then I got to questioning, okay, maybe it's not no. for all. Sure. You know, and the thing with this is we had discussed this actually how long ago um, that it would have been, it would be beneficial in lots of circumstances to have a board of ethics. So um, I think, I think it makes complete sense. So. I guess what makes me feel better is the attorney for the I agree in principle with having an ethics board, but I want to see the ethics of their their criteria that they're using to say that this is ethical and this is not before I'd be ready to vote an affirmative on this. Um, if you look at our chapter and our ordinance for the ethics, no. chapter 47, that kind of spells it out. Our ethics ordinance. And it's it's a committee that's an advisory to the full council, right? So the yeah. council still is making the ultimate council. decision. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's an independent body that would do investigation yeah. and uh, um, yeah, investigation and recommendations to the full council. Yeah. And it also if I'm understanding correctly, it then also covers any requirements underneath a police and fire commission in the event that disciplinary action is needed underneath those two pieces. However, we, we do not have a police and fire commission, though. but state statute requires to move forward uh, with any disciplinary action with police and fire. We need to have an independent uh, body that reviews it. So this could serve as that independent mm -hmm. body. Okay. So, do we have a copy of Chapter 37 or anywhere around? Um, yeah. we do, but it's, yeah. Um, we can look on our website. It's 37 website. or 47? 47. 47. 47. 47. Yeah. Our website has all of our ordinances. Okay. Oh, no. let's see, when do I get a hold of that? City ordinance is there is under City Hall. There is it under City Hall. Yeah. Forty-seven ethics. I don't see it. I... Oh, oh, oh. Okay. It covers those usual City things of. City Hall fair and regulation fair treatment. No, sit, uh, no, yep. mm -hmm. okay. Click on city ordinances. Higher and relative. And the <laughs> and we don't have to set it up either, or I mean, it can just be a, and when it comes to the use, then we can form it, or I would like I would to just form it, yeah. form it right away, yeah, and then we call on it when we need it. Okay, so we we have people on it. Yeah. Right. Okay. 
it's, it's another committee for you to have to fill. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> there you go, Ben. You put that on the website. All right. Oh, we have to approve it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Since this is our first look at it, and we haven't really spent any time looking at the 47 per se, mm -hmm. then we might be better off to have this as a topic for our next committee as a whole. That's sure. what I had and to kind of read through this yep. and get, get comfortable with it. Kind of yeah. 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 And I would say that we could come to it with a lot better understanding. I mean, there's a better understanding right now that this is something that I didn't realize that it was a requirement to have some type of uh, entity if there were uh, investigations with police or fire. So yes. that's an important part I didn't know. So, so yeah, I can certainly. Well, that, a I motion can... of some sort? Or... Well, I'm, I'm, I don't see the table. Or... I'm, going to, I'm going to make a motion to refer it to the council of the whole. Okay. I'll second it. Yeah, I think that's a good yep. idea. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, before we go into closed session, or do are we going to make any decisions? Or uh, yes. Okay. Um, I see. Yes, Larry. Okay. Um, <laughs> that means you have to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Stay. Okay. Okay. We're going into closed session. Wisconsin Statute 19.